Megalodon, the biggest carnivorous fish that's ever lived. And it would be so fantastic if I could get this camera onto his back. I'm going to try from the platform, keep the bait ball above, watch the shark, and see if you get it in a line along here. This is Nigel Marvin. He's a zoologist and an expert in tackling dangerous animals. But his latest adventure is really testing his nerve. He's left the safety of the 21st century behind and traveled back to prehistory. His mission, to visit the seven deadliest seas of all time and to come face to face with the most terrifying sea creatures that the Earth has ever known. So far, he has made it through four prehistoric oceans, but ahead lie the two most dangerous, inhabited by the nastiest collection of predators that nature has yet assembled. And he still has to get past a 50-foot shark called Megalodon. You idiot! Don't move that chump back till you can see the shark! Winch it up quick! The camera was designed to break away from the shark and pop up to the surface. After a couple of days, we picked up the signal. There it is, look, just ahead of us. have a precious and unique cargo. The camera seems okay, there's no damage here. A bit of shark fin. So what's happened is either rubbed this off on rocks on the bottom or something. I just hope it was on long enough to get some really great footage. Wow. This was so exciting. The camera had survived whatever ordeal the shark had put it through. We were in the Pliocene observing a day in the life of a megalodon, and if that wasn't fantastic enough, this happened. It's a silhouette there, look. Whether it's an Odobonosotops or whatever. You see that? And this could be great if we got a kill. He's going down. There's a ta he is attacking, look. Crikey! see that again. The footage we got with the shark camp, it's better than I could have ever hoped. It is so unique. Just watch this. The shark, it's down below. There's a shape up there. It's not an Odobonosotops. It's actually a species of whale. The shark's gone down so it can get more momentum when it attacks. It's accelerating now. And the violence of this impact, look at that cloud of blood that's what knocked the camera off and megalodon this is extraordinary it's a species of shark that actually attacks living whales and pretty big ones at that but even this the ultimate shark will be unable to defend itself from the coming ice age as the oceans turn colder whales with their high body fat will adapt and thrive and move up to the icy polar regions Meanwhile, Megalodon will be forced to stay in the warmer water around the equator. Deprived of its prey, it will be starved into extinction. It's time for Nigel to leave this, the third most dangerous sea behind. Next lies the Jurassic. To reach it, he has to travel back from 4 million to 155 million years ago. 
The Jurassic is right in the middle of dinosaur time, and it's home to some of the most colossal animals ever to live on land, outweighed only by the monsters that live in the water. I've come to the Jurassic because this is a land of monstrous creatures. On the land there are giant dinosaurs. And here in the water, well look at that. That's a shoal of Leedsick Peas and they are the biggest fish that have ever lived. As big as those fish are, there are predators nearly as large that attack them. And that's what I'm here for, to see some of the most massive marine reptiles that have ever lived. And they must be 75 or 80 feet long. that live in the sea. What they do is they filter out any tiny plants and any small animals floating in the ocean. At this time of year though, they're living on their fat reserves and that really sorts out the healthy fish from the sick ones. You can see over there, there's one that can't quite keep up with the shoal, it's just at the edge there. Already it's attracting some of the smaller predators in these Jurassic seas. And there, over there, Metriorhynchus. You just wouldn't expect that. It's a kind of marine crocodile. It's totally adapted for a life in the sea. Great paddle-like feet, nothing like modern crocs. Look at the tail. There's no armor plating there. This creature has sacrificed defence for speed. Wait, that's just a bit close. Get away. Look at that! Below me, it's a most bizarre shark called Hibonus. See those strange horns on the top of its head? And it's going into feast now. Look at it twisting, twisting to get a chunk of flesh. And oh, you feel sorry for the Leedsick Thieves, they're actually eating it alive. It's pretty unnerving being here right next to the shoal. You've got to worry about sharks, marine crocodiles, and I haven't even seen the really massive reptile I've come here for. But I wouldn't have long to wait. No large predators on the first dive, but there's certainly potential prey. This is the injured Leedsick Thies that we saw. We're tracking it with an acoustic tracking device, sending sound into the water. It's bouncing back off the injured fish not moving very fast, but we need to move to starboard now, okay. Captain. As we saw on the dive, the injured Leedsick Thies, it's already drawing in crocodiles and sharks. And before long, something much bigger, it's bound to come in. <laughs> this is it. Look, four flippers, that short, compact neck. It's approaching the Leedsick Thies, it's nearly as big that is colossal and I'm sure this is Lyperodon. It's the biggest carnivorous reptile ever and it is closing down on the lead zip fish. We've got to get this. Peter, can you get the pole cam, mate? Quick as you can. It's pretty deep. I'll go and look on the monitor, see if I can guide you. Move to the left a bit, mate. 
just a bit further, a bit deeper. Just as I thought, it's a live pleurodon. Look at those flippers. It's really had a go at the lead six piece. It's not moving a fin. It must be dead now. We've scared it. It's disappearing into the murk, Pete. It's just fantastic. Well done, mate. <laughs> Those live pleurodon are awe-inspiring sea monsters, and it'd be such a thrill to see them under the water. But of course I'd need some protection, and the technicians and I have come up with this. This is a smell suit. Live pleurodon, they've got a really acute sense of smell, and we're going to use that to protect me. What we do is put a bottle on here, a bottle of noxious chemical, and if the live pleurodon get too close, if things get a little hairy, I'll switch on this valve, there'll be an explosion of chemicals into the water. The chemical we're using is called putrescine. That's basically essence of rotting reptile flesh, and hopefully that will keep them away from me. So why did we decide on putrescine? Have a look at this. We did some field trials with young liar pleurodon in shallow water. We put the smell suit around a dummy, weighted it down, put it on the bottom, and you can see they're putting squid right in the suit. And that's to actually get the live pleurodon excited, try to get a feeding frenzy, and see how they react to the smell suit. And now it was a matter of waiting. In the first experiment, inside the smell suit, there was a chemical deterrent that keeps sharks away. And we wanted to see what would happen with these reptiles. They're very, very curious about the squid. See the release of the chemical there? absolutely no effect at all you'd have had your head bitten off if you'd been wearing that the next experiment we filled the smell suit with putrescine and let's see what happens here is there's still squid on the dummy they know it's not a danger to them here they come here come the lipluridon see that the putrescine's released another one comes in mouth open just gives it a whack i hope it doesn't whack me like that but hopefully that will give me some protection when i go in with the adults As I thought, a live pleurodon, perhaps even a pair of them, have come back to the carcass. We've lost the light, but that doesn't matter to those animals. They live in a world of smell. We've got light so we can see. It's going to be spooky down there, though. And I'm relying on the smell suit to protect me. The cameraman's got one, too. And we'll swing her out. That rosette of really sharp teeth at the front of the jaws there. They are like knife blades. They are piling into that fish carcass, slicing through the flesh of that lead sick piece. And that short neck that helps them too to be more powerful. That's why they can twist off those chunks of flesh. to me that food is really keeping them occupied so I think I can take a calculated risk if they do go for me I've got the smell suit so I'm going to move in as close as I dare I am just 20 feet away from a feeding frenzy 
and some really ferocious sea reptiles, but I am petrified watching this.